In this video, we begin Chapter 3 of Computer Networking, a Top-Down Approach by Kuros and Ross. This chapter examines the transport layer. We will start out with an overview and look at the services provided by the transport layer to applications. Let's get started. Welcome, today we're starting Chapter 3 of Computer Networking, a Top-Down Approach. As I've mentioned before, the slides that we're using were created by the authors of the book, Jim Kuros and Keith Ross. In this chapter, we'll learn about the transport layer. I think of this as starting to get into the details of how networks actually work. In the previous chapter, we looked at how applications request service from the network, but glossed over a lot of the details of how that service is provided. While there have been many different transport protocols over time, there are two that are far more common than any others. These are UDP and TCP. And between those, TCP is the vast majority of internet traffic. Both protocols handle the issues of multiplexing and demultiplexing between the multiple applications that may be requesting service from the transport layer. On top of this, TCP offers reliability, flow control, and congestion control. So we'll be looking at all of these issues in some detail over the course of this chapter. As we move forward, we will first look at the services provided in a generic sense, including multiplexing and demultiplexing. Then we'll see some specifics of UDP. And then we'll look at some principles of how reliability can be handled over an unreliable network. Then we'll look at how TCP handles reliability. Then we'll focus on congestion control and see what principles apply there followed up by looking at how TCP specifically handles congestion control. Now let's try to get a handle on the services that are being provided by the transport layer. We call this providing logical communication between services running on different hosts. From the view of the two applications, they're communicating directly with one another, and the transport layer provides this abstraction, such that the applications don't have to worry about what's happening in the network between the hosts, just the communication needed at the application layer. To do this, the transport layer performs segmentation and reassembly meaning they break the application messages up into smaller units that are able to be transported in packets over the network. And then on the far side, they reassemble them before handing them back to the application layer. As we saw when talking about socket programming, we have two options available to the application, TCP and UDP. Now it's time for an analogy. We're going to think of the network like the mail service. We have kids living in houses, sending letters to one another. So the kids are the processes, the houses are the hosts, and the letters are the messages. So the network layer, which we'll be talking about in the next chapter, provides logical communication between hosts, which of course is a service that the transport layer relies upon. The transport layer provides the logical communication between individual services. So to continue our analogy, Anne and Bill, the kid's parents, provide the multiplexing and demultiplexing service, delivering the letters to the correct kids, whereas the postal service just gets the letters to the correct houses, similar to the network layer delivering packets to the correct hosts. To quickly review the network layering, we have the application layer, which we discussed in the previous chapter, sitting on top of the transport layer, which we're discussing now, which sits on top of the network layer, which will come next. Below that are the link and physical layers. So let's look at the actions of the transport protocol. It starts out receiving a message from the application, and based on that message, it will determine the transport layer header. This header and payload together form a segment, and that segment is what gets passed to the IP or network layer to be encapsulated in a packet. We'll skip over the lower layers for now, and that segment gets delivered to the host on the other end of the connection. The network layer delivers that segment up to the transport layer, and the transport layer reads the header values to determine what application to deliver the message to. It then removes the header and passes the message up to the application via the socket. Now a quick review of the two different transport protocols we commonly see in the internet. TCP provides reliability, in-order delivery, congestion control, flow control, and in order to do this, it utilizes a connection setup process. UDP offers none of these things. It is simply providing multiplexing and demultiplexing for services on top of the IP best effort service. Remember early on, we said that some applications would like things like bandwidth guarantees or delay guarantees, but the underlying internet service does not offer these things, and the transport layers are unable to create these services on top of it. Now that we've seen the services that are being offered by the transport layer, we'll move on to looking at multiplexing and demultiplexing. That wraps up our discussion of the transport layer services, although we'll be coming back to those repeatedly throughout the chapter. In the next video, we'll look at multiplexing and demultiplexing. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.